Hi everybody, a little bit of a different topic today. We just came back from Ingolstadt in Germany where we stayed one day with Lorenz Guardian, you know, the by now world famous researcher on historical Tempi. He's a wonderful man with a wonderful collection on early print of which he donated me again a part. You see here the scores and books and I'll definitely make a video on this since this is a stunning collection of beautiful, important and also rare prints. Match for two keyboards uh, or two pianos or uh, four hands piano playing. So I'll, I'll tell you in a future video why. But for now, I want to share with you this score. And by the way, there is another special object we brought over from Ingolstadt. You'll see a glimpse at the end of this video. But this score, unlike the other editions, is not, it's not a very old, it's an edition with music of the 19th century French pianist Charles Valentin Alcon, prepared and annotated by Remo Lewenthal, a by then famous pianist. And if you know Lewenthal, who is or better was, because he passed away in 1988, if you have memories on his playing, perhaps heard him even live, I'd love to read your story in the comment section. Lewenthal, he had a pretty dramatic life. He was born in 1923 and he died at the early age of 55. He was a rising star in the piano world until he got beaten very badly in 1953 while walking through New York Central Park by a group of hooligans. Imagine that, he suffered broken bones in both hands and arms for a pianist, which took years for him to heal. He withdrew from stage and returned only in the 60s with his passion for the music of the legendary contemporary of Liszt, Charles Valentin Alcon. Again, this book has little historical value, but it's interesting for, yeah, of course, the metronome numbers. How else could it have, have been part of uh, Lorenz's collection? But another thing on that, opening the book, I saw the dedication by Remo Lewenthal to a certain Mr. Mark Penchel. On Penchel, you find some information on the web. He appeared to have been a very well-known musicologist, born in 1888 and died in 1974. But on the second page of this book, however, I found this letter. You know, it's always wonderful to find signs of previous users in all books you find you buy or you own. It kind of connects you to history. It, it makes history almost tangible. You know, some of the books here in front of me have dates of purchase of 1823. Can you imagine that? That's during Beethoven's lifetime. Those little signs of generations before you, to whom belonged to the world before we were born, they transmit, so to speak, their legacy at least a tiny bit to us. And finding a real letter, of course, is the pinnacle of science of the past. It is a living slice of history that comes to you in a very unexpected way. Lewenthal used USA airmail for his letter. And he had a very good reason for it, as we will see. He wrote the letter on July 21st, 1973. He sent it on July 23rd and already by July 28th, as we can see in the top left corner, Penchel replied. Both men have passed away since long, so there should be no problem reading this letter together. It's intriguing, I can tell. It will draw you into a story immediately. So let's read. So dear Mr. Penchel, thanks to your kind help, I had the pleasure of visiting Madame la Générale Pinard when I was in Paris last October for further Alcon research, I did not want to disturb you by calling you at the time. I have already imposed so often on your kindness. However, I find it necessary once again to ask you for some help. As you know, I have been doing research on Alcon for more than 30 years in preparation for a book on him. This year, Someone who's helping me with certain details of my work proved to be a thief and a spy. He stole from me information regarding the sources of much of my material and has been passing it on to other people who have gotten interested in Alcon because of my efforts 
and who wish to capitalize on my hard work. It is therefore necessary for me to move very swiftly now. There are five people who are friends of Alcom, about whom I am very anxious to have all possible information, particularly, of course, letters. With your incredible knowledge of the musical scene of Paris, it is entirely possible that you would have some information on them. They are the famous violinist Morin, de Berta, a pianist who has written an article on Alcon, and I'm very anxious to know what has happened to the archives of Mr. Blondel of Erards. I was long ago in touch with Mr. Marcotte, who told me at the time that there were no archives, but I wonder if he was not mistaken. Then there was a certain Madame Hecht, who seems to have been a friend or pupil of Alcan. And finally, I am still looking for any letters of Isidore Philippe which mention Alcan in any way. Isidore Philippe is a very interesting name, by the way. Once again, dear Mr. Penchel, forgive me for intruding. This is a matter of great importance to me, and you have been one of the few people who have really been able to help me in my 30 years of strenuous effort regarding Alcan. With warmest greetings and kind regards, faithfully yours, Remo Lewenthal. So, Lewenthal was working since 30 years on a book on the life and works of Alcan. He had assistance in his research, but apparently made a wrong decision in his selection. Parts of his research was stolen and given to competitors who might publish the information that belonged to him first, robbing him from his earned right to connect his name to these findings. How cool is it, however, to be transported back in time witnessing the way musicians and musicologists had to do research? We have quickly forgotten in our times how much of help Mr. Google is to any one of us. Or temporary search would have taken many, many, many years longer if we didn't have this unbelievable access to digitized libraries where Google even searched the scanned PDFs for us. Nothing of all of that back in 1973. Lewenthal's only way of collecting information was by either traveling to libraries, a very expensive and slow process, frustrating process by times as well, I can imagine, or by contacting his colleagues through writing. This letter is the more intriguing since, from what I've learned through some quick searches on, yes, Google, that Lewenthal has never finished his book. I have no idea if that was because he wasn't really fit for the huge undertaking a project like this was, or really through the theft of parts of information as we have learned here. If you know more on this, please share it in the comment section. I would love to know the rest of the story if there is one. So that was all for today guys, but stay tuned because I'll have some incredible news to share soon. There is this object right there that looks like Vianney's um, Pianoforte. And now it's not my Fritz copy that Joris is building, that's coming in a few weeks. This is an original 1820 Frenzel historical pianoforte and it is a gift, yes, a gift from Lorenz Guardian. It's mind-blowing. I'm still recovering from the emotional shock from receiving this instrument. It is too soon for me to share it on YouTube. The instrument needs to settle a bit, especially the tuning. I've brought back the pitch down a little bit. But if you really can't wait for it to have more information, you might want to become a patron for Authentic Sound. The link is in the description below, because there I'll share with my patrons some rough information this week, some unpolished videos and pictures on the instrument, which are hard to share on YouTube. So the next hangout also with the patrons will be at that piano. But of course, I will not forget you here on YouTube. Don't worry, just give me some time to prepare a nice video for you on this precious instrument. It's really crazy these days, all exciting stuff happening. I'll tell you soon more about it. So see you soon again. Bye.